Welcome everybody inside Studio 7 at Johnston Hall. I'm Brad Galley and he's Richie Donnelly. Sunday's NCAA selection special brought plenty of buzz to Marquette's campus as Coach Williams and his crew awaited their tournament seating. Just four days removed from a devastating loss to Villanova at the buzzer, the team gathered at the Union Sports Annex for the announcement of their postseason future. In this bracket, the number 16, Golden Eagles! Greg Gumbel said it. The Golden Eagles are a sixth seed and will take on the number one 11 seed, Utah State Aggies, on Friday at 11.30 a.m. Taking a look at the opponents that Marquette will face out of the Western Athletic Conference, the team, the Aggies, of course, average over 72 points a game and hold their opponents to an impressive 62 points a ball game. From the field, they're shooting almost 50% on the year, rebounding the ball seven rebounds more than their opponent. But turnovers, they're in the negative margin. 11 turnovers for the Aggies. Their opponents, they force just 10. The guy Marquette's going to have to stop on star watch there, Gary Wilkinson, 6'9", 240, big man, 17 points a game, 7 rebounds per contest, and shoots 59% from the field. Let's take a look at the comparison of these two teams. Marquette is rocking the sixth seed after losing five of six games down the stretch. The Golden Eagles are in the tournament for the fourth time in as many years, which is the first four-year stretch that they have gone to the dance since the 1980s season. On the other side of the ball, the 11th seeded Aggies of Utah State won the athletic Western Athletic Conference after winning 30 games this season. The last time they were in the tournament in 2005, Utah State led Arizona at the half. Marquette and Utah State tip off on Friday at 11.30 Central. For more on Marquette's seeding, let's swing it over to Brian Henry at the Annex. No surprise to see the Golden Eagles in the NCAA tournament this year, but it was the Big East Conference that helps Marquette earn its seeding a sixth seed as they take on Utah State, as you heard Richie and Brad just say. Now the coaches and players were available to talk yesterday, and here's what they had to say about their matchup with a team from the WAC. How long will it take for your assistants to have the team up on Utah State? Uh, we have 14 games as of right now. Uh, I've gotten five texts from coaches that have played them so far, trying to get scouting reports and get moving. Today, o over the next 24 hours, it's critical, particularly before 3 o'clock tomorrow when we practice, that we at least have some sort of foundation for how they play, not only on offense but on defense. I have a pretty good feel for how they play on offense. They were on TV last night against Nevada, and uh, they run a set play every possession. That's how they play. Nothing. I, I don't. I don't. I know. I know that they're a good team because they, their name was called. I know that much, and I know they're going to want to win, and anything can happen because it's March. So we're just going to make sure that I'm going to make sure that I do everything in my power to to help this team win and keep advancing. When was the last time you were in Idaho? When I was sleeping, I had a dream. I have no <laughs> idea. No, I've never even thought about Idaho. Never, never mm -hmm. even remotely. Yeah. Never. What do you know about Idaho? Capital I. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's good to say I don't know much, but I know that they uh, they have a pretty good big man. And um, uh, uh, Coach Coach Aki and I was just talking about it. And he said that he uh, he gets a lot of work done. And they won 30 games, I believe. Um, yeah. So I mean, they're they're not in the tournament for no reason. So you know, there there there's really no easy game. Jerome McNeil explained though that when it comes down to it at the NCAA tournament, it's wide open. It means nothing, absolutely nothing. I think uh, when, once you get on that floor with the, uh, the, the opposing team and nobody's at home, most of, in most cases, you know, some teams get seated closer to home, but in most cases, from, from, what, from what we've experienced so far, you know, nobody's ever at home. You throw the ball up and you see what happens, and the seasons mean nothing. Uh, only thing only thing that means anything is the name on the front of the jersey, and, uh, you know, it's an unbelievable time, uh, you know, the best time the best time of the year for college basketball, any basketball fan, I think. So, you know, like I said, we're really excited about the opportunity and uh, looking forward to just going out there and competing. This will be the first time in four years that Mark Marquette will head to the NCAA tournament while the student body is in session. It sure looks to be an exciting week here on campus. Reporting from the Annex, Brian Henry, MUTV Sports. Running through the pairings for the entire West region, here are what's going on. Top seeded Connecticut faces 16th seed Chattanooga. BYU is the 8th seed and will face the 9th seeded Texas A&M Aggies. Big Ten tournament champion and fifth seed Purdue will do battle with 12th seeded UNI. The Pac-10's Washington Huskies face the SEC tournament champs, the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Of course, your Golden Eagles will have the sixth seed and will play the 11th seeded Utah State Aggies, as previously stated. Now, if the Golden Eagles win that game, they'll meet the winner of three seed Missouri and the 14th seed Cornell. The Pac-10 sends seventh seeded Cal 
to bout with the ACC's Maryland Terrapins. And to round out the western side of the bracket, the Memphis Tigers will do battle with Cal State Northridge. Now the regional final, it'll be held in Glendale, Arizona. For more on the reaction to Marquette's seeding, we'll send it over to Chris Swick and the Bottom Line guys. All right, guys, welcome to the Bottom Line. Hope everyone's doing well tonight. Uh, let's jump right into it. Apparently, six is the magic number for Marquette. After dropping six out of seven games to end the season, the Golden Eagles have been ranked sixth in the NCAA tournament. At the midpoint of the season, it looked like Marquette could be a number two or three seed. However, even after their struggles at the end of the year, they still managed to get a six seed in the tourney. So. You guys think the sixth spot is justified? You guys think they deserve this spot? Absolutely, I think this is justified. If you look at the records of the other six seeds, you have West Virginia 23 and 11, you have sure. UCLA 25 and 8, Arizona State's 24 and 9, and we finished 24 and 9. The fact is, we struggled a lot towards the end of the season. We did not show that we were capable of winning big games, really, for the fact of the matter, any games without Dominique James. Uh, I was more expecting a seven seed. Uh, heading into uh, Selection Sunday, I was actually kind of impressed that we got a sixth seed. This is exactly where they belong. I think, I think it was right on. They're limping in the tournament, as you said. The early <laughs> season success thought they could be, you know, win the Big East, but then the injury to Dominic James really hindered that. But they're limping in the tournament right now, and they're still trying to, they're in an adjustment, trying to play with Maurice Acker after James is hurt. And Jarrell and West just really haven't been the same. I agree. I mean, their only win is against St. John's, and anybody could have beaten St. John's on that day. Even, even DePaul could have beat St. John's on that day. And, and with, with that injury of Dominique, you know, that's justified. I thought maybe even a seven, like, like Brian said, could have been even justified. Yeah, and I mean, you look at the gauntlet schedule that they face at the end of the year, they lost a lot of those games. I still think six is a little high, actually, better than I expected, kind of what you guys said, but just want to reiterate, I mean, it, it might have been the conference, and the, you know what, that's where we're going next. Do you think that the Big East had something to do with them getting ranked six? I mean, they're limping into this tournament. You know, they lost six out of seven. Michael, why don't you just take it right away? Well, I think, you know, it, it did have something to do with it because sure. the end of their schedule, they, it was tough. And then in the Big East Conference tournament, anything can happen. Any team right. can win. But I, I don't think it was the end all. I think that, you know, even without Do even with Dominique James or without, you know, they, they would have struggled to get a good seed um, there toward the end, no matter what conference. I think it's, it's the whole body of work that Marquette put in. All, all the games that they won early on, it's just kind of like how, Louis, how Pittsburgh and UConn lost, but the body of work got them the number one seed, and the body of work Marquette was solid. They, they played tough in those games, but they just sure. couldn't win the close games, so they, they, just, they were just a little bit short. You, you know, in my opinion, conference only matters if you're on the bubble or if you're going for a top seed. I think UConn got the top seed over Memphis because UConn was in the Big East, and teams like Wisconsin and you know, like Arizona got in because they're in major conference over you know, teams like Creighton and St. Mary's. Uh, outside of that, Marquette, the whole body work was the reason why they got the sixth seed. They looked at it, they saw we did have quality wins against Wisconsin. We did play well against you know, Louisville. We hung very tough against UConn when, when the game we lost down to James. Went to overtime against Syracuse. Won one game in the Big East tourney. And that is why we got the sixth seed. Okay, now guys, you know, one of the players from Marquette that's going to be highly uh, you know, looked at under a magnifying glass in this tournament is going to be Maurice Acker. You guys feel right now that Maurice is playing at a level where Marquette can win some games in the tournament? Um, I think so because it, outside of the Syracuse game where he had seven turnovers, he, he's had two turnovers or less in all of those games. The only problem is he's not a facilitator like Dominique James was. He's not getting Jarrell and West the open shots that he had. Um, you, you know, so so it's, he's going to be important. He needs to start looking for a shot like he did in the second half of that Villanova game. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great point. I mean, you notice right now that when Jarrell and, and West are getting the ball, there's a guy draped over them. You didn't see that a lot with Dominique James at point guard. But, I mean, Maurice Acker has gotten better. I mean, Brian, what do you think? You know, what did we really expect from Acker, though, when, when James got hurt, we knew he was going to be starting? I think he's done an admirable job. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. done basically what I expected, and at times he's even uh, he's exceeded my expectations. He's, he's, he's real He can't fast. just hold his own. He needs to do a little bit more. All right, guys, well, that's going to do 